it sounds like the just, you know, right now, if I'm a DoorDash uh, driver, for example, and I go to a busy part of town to pick up or drop, you know, to pick up, I guess, uh, uh, an, an order, I guess you would say, right? Typically, it's like challenging to find a parking spot or I have to double park or park in a red, risk getting a ticket. Right. And in this situation, it's basically a one-time registration in the cities where you're operating one of these smart loading zones. And now I have a digital wallet. And every time I pull into a spot, it automatically sort of sees that I'm there. And, um, you know, can I reserve spots? Or how does it work on the sort of gig uh, driver's side? Yeah, well, right now it's it's a, a, pa a passive system. So we don't have registrations available in the cities that we're working in, although that is something that we can do. But we found that really it's if, if the, if the um, locations are enough, you have enough mm -hmm. locations in an area and you have um, that registration component to the smart loading zones, it really uh, you have that much more much more availability. Mm -hmm. um, we found in other areas when you do things like registration, you need a really strong enforcement me mechanism. And mm. that's really... And when you say registration, do you mean the first time registration? Or are you talking about more reserving? Uh, like if I, if, I, if I have an order coming up and I can reserve it, you know, a spot. Uh, I'm talking about just the registration for the loading zone program. Yeah. Okay, cool. And so you're saying that drivers um, in this program, how do they register for it then? Or how do you work with... Yeah, so we have um, a website, um, mm -hmm. and anytime that you go to one of these zones, they're indicated by signage, sometimes Got by it. curb markings, and then there'll be the ability to scan a QR code or go to the, mm -hmm. the website, the URL itself, um, and do the registration there. Got it. So it's sort of like a quick pay for parking one time kind of experience, and then now I'm I'm locked and loaded for the future, right? That's that's right. Okay, cool. So I think the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, right now, like what's like, what's the experience been like working with drivers? How receptive have they been to this? Because obviously, I imagine that, you know, right now, I pay nothing directly, right? Like in the short term, I'm not paying for parking, usually, or I might be putting in the meter, but I am risking tickets or, you know, driving around the block, and that's costing me money. And so I'm always curious about, you know, this is like a medium to longer term value proposition to dr for drivers, like it definitely makes sense. But I'm curious, like, how receptive have they been to that? And what do you what have you found is like the most effective way to message it to them or to get them? to register, uh, you know, in general for this type of a uh, pilot? Yeah. So yeah, you, you highlight some really interesting points there. And we've been seeing that in some of our feedback from drivers. We, we issue out some surveys to get, um, to get feedback and scores. And we found that the more the drivers use the zones, mm -hmm. the higher the score is. Mm -hmm. And I think that is reflective of that kind of, um, you know, short-term versus longer-term view, because yeah, you can say, oh, I'm I'm paying for uh, this parking spot that I didn't have to pay for before. But what you don't also don't, you know, maybe take into account is that you have uh, more access to that space. You don't have to yeah. double park and risk getting a ticket. You don't have to search for parking as, you know, as much. And yeah. so you're having that faster pickup. You're able to do more deliveries in, you know, a normal shift. You're uh, potentially able to get more uh, uh, um tips because you yep. have faster, you know, faster delivery, better delivery. So all these things really benefit drivers in the long term yeah. um, and and really, you know, hit on some of those core, pa core pain points. Yeah. I really like the sort of idea or the messaging of like faster pickups and no tickets, right? Because that's yeah. one thing that, you know, I'm always worried about if I'm doing a delivery, right? It's like, oh gosh, you know, it's like once in a while, right? You know, and even like if you do find a parking spot with a meter, sometimes you're like, oh, I'm just going to risk it, right? Because it's yeah. like, oh, you know, some like parking in Santa Monica, for example, I'm from Santa Monica, so I'll throw them under the bus. It's like 50 cents every 15 minutes or something crazy like that. Like that cuts into your earnings pretty uh, right. big time. So I guess speaking of that, how much is it uh, to park, for example, in one of your cities, you know, per minute or how does it work? Sure. Yeah. So for example, in um, Pittsburgh and in Omaha, we're looking at uh, a graduate structure. So the first 10 minutes of parking is less is a dollar. Um, so you're talking like seven cents for the first, you know, uh, yeah. five minutes or so. So it it isn't uh, that much that cuts in. And then over time, what we're trying to do is incentivize that turnover. So the longer that you're there, uh, the more you you pay per minute. Gotcha. So for the first ten minutes, it's one dollar, and for five minutes, it's seven cents. Is that what you said? Uh, no, for five for five minutes, it's it's uh, seven cents a minute. 
Oh, five minutes. It's yeah. seven cents a minute. Okay. So it's pretty cheap for the first five minutes, basically, like right. you were saying, you know, it's almost, you know, negligible for the first five minutes. Um, but it does, you know, like if you had to do a dollar on every trip that would, uh, add up over time, uh, for drivers. 